What's up, my friends? Welcome to My Chemical Fancast. I'm Haley. And I'm Kat. And this is a podcast dedicated to all things My Chemical Romance. Today, we are delving into another patron episode from Alexander. So Alex asks, um, what do we think the Black Parade would look like as a musical? So that's what we are discussing today. Um, Before we dig in, first, is everyone okay? Are you washing your hands? Are you staying away from people? Are you staying the fuck inside? Are you staying six feet away from all humankind for the rest of our existence? I feel like this fandom has had a really good um, prepping for this situation. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because we don't, we're most of us, most of us are introverts, or most of us spend a lot of time at home. So. Yeah, as I mentioned to Haley, I'm kind of thriving. Like, I'm kind of thriving without having to go (laughs) into society. (laughs) It's kind of nice. I it's mean, not you know, my strong suit. Yeah, I am still being forced to go to work, but um, for those that are are able to work from home, uh, bless, congratulations. Oh um, man, it's a weird time, guys. It's just a super weird time. We don't know what the future holds. No one really knows what the future holds, and like you kind of can't help but speculate about it because it's such a weird position to be in. But also, it's so useless to speculate about it because we don't know. Mm-hmm. So the best we can do is just try to take it day by day. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, myself included, this has been a very like highly anxiety ridden time. Oh, yeah. So I'm trying to focus on the things that I can control versus Mm -hmm. the things that I cannot control. So I cannot control other people. (laughs) I can't control if they go out. If I can't control if they go to bars. I can't control the spread of the virus. I can't control if my work forces me to co- go to work and go out in the world, but I can control my own cleanliness, being away from people, setting my own boundaries, getting myself off of social media and not taking in as much news because that is like one of the biggest factors in anxiety right now mm-hmm. is taking in so much news about this and having to talk about it all the time. So Yeah, which, you know, we're guilty of at this very moment. Yeah. But... <laughs> I feel like it would it would be a miss if we if we didn't talk about it. Like we have to, you know, we have to mention it. We have to Yeah. You know, everybody is on the same page right now. We're all kind of a little a little nervous. So Yeah. And you know what? And there are like there are some benefits to this or at least there are some there's some interesting things that have happened. Like everyone has sort of stopped whatever they were doing, right? Yeah. And now we're just all focused on this virus. Like other politics, like whatever, like that is not happening right now. It's just like everyone in the world is focused on like the same thing at once, which is so rare. <laughs> like when has yeah. that ever ever happened? It's just it's so it's so strange. It's good I think maybe to like take it as a moment to like if you can pause and recalibrate, try to milk it for all it's worth. But I know a lot of people are struggling and that's rough. If that's if that's you, man, we're sorry. <laughs> and we yeah, hope I you can get you. help soon because like this is nobody plans for this. You can't plan for it. Right. So. so let's try for the next, I don't know, 45 minutes to take your mind off of it. Whoa, 45 minutes. We'll see. We'll see what <laughs> let's happens. Let's see how much we can milk out of this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yes. So in in the next 30 minutes, we'll talk about this amazing hypothetical. What if the Black Parade was a musical? The Black Parade exclamation point. So to preface, um, a few years ago, there was a small movement to produce a musical about the Black Parade. Uh, their premise was that it took place in Nazi Germany. Well, hold on. Okay. There were... Yep. I think this has happened a couple times. Has it? Yeah, because this... I remember this last coming up in like 2016 or 2017-ish, mm-hmm. just like on Tumblr, you know? And then before that is what you're about to talk about, this 2014 thing where like, you know, someone somewhere said that they would adapt it to this Broadway or, you know, it's like an off-Broadway, like a New York adaptation of the musical. I don't know the background of that, like who was behind all of this, but there was like some art for it in this description. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the description for it that we are aware of is that it takes place in Nazi Germany and it follows the story of Helena, who's... (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Whose father was an officer in... He was a Nazi. (laughs) 
<laughs> this is a very spicy, a very spicy concept. Yeah, and she, so Helena falls in love with Ari, who is a Jewish boy, and as the war progresses, they decide to run away together. Uh, this concept is problematic <laughs> now in, like, this day and age. Um, like, World War II is an interesting setting, for sure, for stories. Um, like, we've explored that before. We've talked about that as, you know, like, Ghost of You vibes and all that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like having someone whose father is a Nazi fall in love with a Jewish boy. <laughs> it's a... Uh not advisable it's, it's difficult <laughs> it's difficult to uh to set a a romance against a gigantic tragedy and have it be successful you know like yeah. those have like there are a couple of those that have been successful but it's oh you're writing a, a thin line yeah this is a uh, yeah it's it's rough i wouldn't recommend it's I would best say. it's it's best to not it's it's best to not. <laughs> <laughs> so making a musical out of the Black Parade. Now, while I love the idea of this, because honestly, I just want to be in a musical where I get to sing my chemical romance songs, getting, well, one, getting the rights to the music would be in, like fucking oh, impossible. Am, this is why, like, I don't know exactly where this 2014 thing originated from, but Anyone can say that they're going to adapt anything to be a musical. Like, I yeah. could say that. It's not hard. But, like, yeah, getting the rights is another thing entirely. I'm very certain that, like, whatever this 2014 thing was, it was not official. And then they went mm -hmm. to our good friend Stacey Fass, personal friend Stacey Fass, to uh, get the <laughs> rights. And she was like, no. <laughs> oh, fuck you. This concept is not it. <laughs> um no. Yeah, and I think that happened again with someone on Tumblr where they had tried to get the rights and they got shot down. They were very upset about it. Anyway, yeah. And um, so uh, I feel like if they if anyone were to get the rights for it, it would have to be like it would be heavily scrutinized by WB and probably the the guys. Oh, definitely. It wouldn't happen without them being like this seems like an okay idea. Yeah. Because it would be something that would be, like, attached to their name, to their, you know, legacy, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it would have to be definitely approved by them. And I don't think, I, I think their standards are very high. And there's not a lot of things that could meet that right now. So, <laughs> it would also be categorized as a jukebox musical. So, if you don't know what a jukebox musical is, it's a musical like Mamma Mia, um, American Idiot, Across the Universe, We Will Rock You. So it uses existing songs, usually by a particular band, and puts them into a storyline, um, potentially using character names from the songs to name characters in the story like Dear Prudence or um, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds or Hey Jude, you know, stuff like that. You'll notice that all of those musicals aren't necessarily great musicals. You will notice. I think it's um, a theme. <laughs> you, you know, I'm not, I'm not knocking any of these musicals i'm not knocking mamma mia because who doesn't love mamma mia as just like <laughs> a joyful mu uh, like musical movie however they have kind of a stigma <laughs> attached to them where it's kind of yes. it's kind of campy and in not a great way yeah and like the reason mamma mia works works the best out of any of them is because like it's already pop and so like it's not the fact that it got turned into this campy poppy musical was like all right you know like no one no one here is like like takes abba you know like mm -hmm. super seriously you know like yeah which is not a knock on abba it's just like abba is a fun group you yeah, know they're fun they're not meant to be taken like super seriously like that but when you turn the beatles into across the universe you have a bunch of people who take the beatles super fucking seriously and so you turn it into across the universe and a lot of people are going to have a lot of fucking opinions, a lot of negative opinions, because those songs are very like close to them, which I think would happen with this as well, because like yeah. the Black Parade is very important to fans who really like the Black Parade. And it's not as like fun as ABBA hits, you know? Yeah, I feel like if any story were to be attached to it, it would end up being too dark or too abstract for the Broadway audience. Because mm -hmm. you'll notice that a lot of the musicals that do well kind of follow a similar 
pattern. They're like, the underdog has a thing that they want, and they face obstacles, and they achieve it, and then things are great. But then there's probably like some kind of bittersweet ending. Mm Mm-hmm. And then the two I'm thinking of right now are Wicked and, and um, Dear Evan Hansen, <laughs> which are honestly very similar. <laughs> um, now that I'm thinking about it. And then musicals that have a more abstract storyline, like We Will Rock You, which is a jukebox musical and has a very abstract storyline where people can't hear music anymore. But there's oh my one, god! But there's one guy who does hear music in his head, and what? it comes out like he sings it, and people are like, "What the fuck is this, dude?" And he's like, "I gotta go find my own thing." It's and like The Giver, but with exactly music exactly. instead of colors. <laughs> That's it. So, but you will notice nobody knows what We Will Rock You is. Nobody. <laughs> nope, I've never heard of it <laughs> except for me. Because is it new? <laughs> no, it's not new. I I watched it in like two thousand nine. Wow, um, I had no idea. I you know so unless you're like steeped in the culture, you're not gonna know about this shit. I'm gonna tell you that the concept sounds uh, a little sketch to me. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> you gotta you gotta come up at this stuff with an open mind. Yeah. Um, so in, so in that line of thought, I feel like any concept involving the Black Parade would be too dark or too abstract. If you followed, like, the concept that Gerard put out, that's much too dark for a musical. (laughs) (laughs) It is quite dark. Like, how do you how do you imagine that that as a musical? I mean, you know, it would be really interesting. I would love to see House of Wolves as a Broadway scene. I would I would love it. But here's the thing. So this person asked us if we did have a concept, and I do have a concept. Do you please tell me? <laughs> Buckle up. Oh boy, okay? here we go. All right. Buckle up. I'm ready. I'm buckled in. <laughs> all right. First of all. We're sticking with the art, okay? We're sticking with, like, the vibe of, like, all the album art and, like, the City of the Dead and the costumes. Colleen Atwood mm-hmm. is attached to this project. Yeah. She is making the costumes. I'm down. She's, like, got a set designer. Okay. We are in World War I. One. Not World War Two. World Less War I. Less controversial. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Our main character. The curtain opens. Um... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, give me, give me the rundown. Give me the whole thing. I'm going to give you the whole thing. So our main character is a young guy, and he is kind of a womanizer and also mm-hmm. a misanthrope. You know, he's like, he's like, you know, kind of like a shitty dude, right? Right. But he gets drafted into World wow. War One, and he's like, oh, fuck. And he's, uh, he does not step up to the plate. He's kind of a shitty soldier. He's kind of cowardly. Ultimately, he gets injured, and he ends up in the hospital, along with a fellow soldier who we will have seen before throughout this musical, who is, like, kind of, like, helps him along and is, like, generally, like, a much better person than he is. And they ended up in the hospital because, like, he kind of held him down and probably, like, saved his life and made sure that he was injured and not killed. But they both got injured. Also, in this hospital, there are some nurses who will Mm -hmm. come back later, but, you know, you've got some female figures around who will form the basis for later characters. He and this soldier come down with a disease in the hospital and he goes, he gets a fever and he starts slipping into a fever dream. Mm -hmm. And so his dream is like, is the city of the dead that we see in the album art. It's like this steampunk turn of the century, like bleak death fantasy land Mm -hmm. that is like kind of like a sort of purgatory. And there's, like, the city of the dead that maybe has, like, you know, some BLI vibes and that, like, it's a functioning city, but, like, it's kind of, like, soulless in a weird way. And his whole thing is that he has to go through these trials and he has to wrestle with his demons and atone for his sins. And there's this cast of characters, which is, like, definitely his mom, who's definitely played by Liza Minnelli, his, Mm. like, wife slash girlfriend, whoever... Um, Joan of Arc, maybe, just because, just because, why not? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, we can do whatever we want. And, like, some of the nurses that were in the hospital will be reimagined as Mother War and Fear and Regret. And so, like, you get all these characters, he goes through a bunch of trials, 
he has to like kind of realize what he's done and make up for it and like prove himself to these characters. And at the end of it, his fever breaks and he wakes up, but the soldier that was next to him is dying. And so like in the last moments of the show, he comforts him as he dies and he vows to be better. Mm -hmm. Curtain fall and scene. Yeah. Yeah. Standing ovation. (laughs) Yes. Wow. It's perfect. (laughs) That's awesome. Change nothing. Change absolutely nothing. Um, 100%. That's perfect as it is. Love it. Let's put it. Um, Gerard, get your people to call my people. <laughs> we'll figure this out. We'll work it out, you know? Um, I have about $5 I can pay for the rights to the music. Yes. So, <laughs> Or if he just wants to adopt my concept and produce it himself, sure. yeah. that's fine. And I will just take a nominal fee yeah. of like, I don't know, $100,000 or something. <laughs> Or, you know, like 15% of revenue. Right. I mean, it's only fair. It is only fair. Maybe more. 15% would, seems low for yeah, writing the whole concept. Yeah, that seems low. I would go for 25. 25? Okay. Because, like, I mean, like, it is their music that is the bulk of it, but... Whatever. Yes, at Unimportant. least 25. I change, I change my answer. At least 25. Yeah. I'm going to have to call some people to figure out what I should charge. <laughs> So, yes, that sounds, you know, actually, have you ever seen American Idiot? I mean, I've seen clips from it, but I haven't seen the whole thing. So there's a scene. One of the characters, basically, he goes off to war and he gets injured and he goes into a hospital where there's nurses. Oh, no. Did I steal this concept accidentally? And there's ner- the nurses. He has a fever dream. No! <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but no, he has a fever dream about one of the nurses. And so she like descends from the ceiling essentially and sings Extraordinary Girl with him. Wow. It's actually like the way they reimagine the song. I really like it. But anyway, that's the that's the fever dream that he has is Extraordinary Girl. And then he wakes up and like she's there and then they like end up together later or something. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um and then in Across the Universe there is a guy who gets drafted to war and yeah, I in do, the hospital. I did see that one. I was yeah. thinking of that when I wrote this, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> so but I like I like the idea of not just him because both of those scenes are dudes fantasizing about women in their fever dreams. So I like that that's not what this case is <laughs> and that he's growing. Yeah, he's growing. This is like very like this is like a Tavasis, you know, like he's essentially like going to like hell or purgatory. Like he's going to the underworld, you know, or the afterlife yeah. in a sense. And like, it's very existential. Um, yeah. I <laughs> would like, need, I would need a Greek chorus in this. Oh, yeah. I would need. Oh yeah. You yeah. need like a, like, or like a Pepe or something like. Yeah. yeah there's definitely got to be a narrator in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely got to be a narrator. And, like, I kind of want it, I want it to look like the Welcome to the Black Parade video. Like, I want him to wear, like, that, you know, the makeup mm-hmm. um, and the fever dream and whatnot. And, yeah. like, I want that City of the Dead background that was in the video, I want that to be the actual set background. <laughs> Hell yeah. For that part. The literal one they used for the video, not a replica. Not a replica. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> dig it up. Original. Well, so that's, that's that on right. that. <laughs> At one point, I did want to make this person did ask, uh, should there be new music included? Uh, And if you're going for a Tony, you gotta, you gotta have a new song. You gotta have a new song. Like, if Gerard wants to be an EGOT winner anytime soon, he's got to have a new song in there. (laughs) Wow. I feel so. Another another question that he asked was, "Do you think the guys would be involved, or like what level of involvement do you think they would have?" And I feel like if they were going to be involved, they would end up writing a new song. Yeah, um, and I feel like Ray would be in charge of the arrangements of the pieces. <laughs> Absolutely. And then Gerard would be like, "No, no, I don't want to get involved," but then he gets super involved. Yes. <laughs> exactly he'd be like hands off i don't care i'm just gonna provide some notes (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's how i imagine it you know and i want i want mikey to be in the band Mm -hmm. in the pit orchestra yeah playing like a upright bass (laughs) a tambourine (laughs) but we have to have liza for the first broadway run we have absolutely we have to also it is on broadway 
Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, there's no off Broadway bullshit. There's no, no. off off Broadway. No, it's it's Broadway or bust. And Gerard would have to play a character for one performance, just one. Wow, because Billy Joe Armstrong played um, Saint Jimmy in like one or two of the runs of the performances of American Idiot. So I feel like he should take a line from Billy Joe. <laughs> And uh, just do something. Do anything. Doesn't matter. We can find a place for him. He can I'll, play, write, I'll write him into it. Yeah, he could play the devil. He can play one of the wolves or something. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm like very, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm not gunning for it to be a musical because I feel like that would be a whole can of worms that I don't want to be involved in. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I would think it'd be cool as a comic, like this concept or like an animated short or something. But yeah. I'm not I'm not sold on a musical. Yeah. Well, if it were made into a musical, they would have to include the B-sides or at least one they have to include Heaven Help Us. Mhm. Because it just fits the concept. Yeah, well. we're not we're not doing teenagers, okay? We're not no, going to We're going to replace like, Heaven Help Us with I mean, replace teenagers with Heaven Help Us. Yeah, I could maybe see teenagers working in the beginning of my concept, like before he gets drafted. Like, I oh, don't like know. him being a shitty person. <laughs> yeah, I could maybe see that. <laughs> maybe. Oh man, but yeah, I'm not a not totally on board with uh, Black Parade the musical. Though I can kind of see the art working for it. Like the art is just so good, you know. Like yeah. the art is just so incredible, and there's so much depth to it, and like that's kind of intriguing as a musical. Or, like, as something, as something else other than what it is right now. But, yeah, jukebox musicals are a a fraught, (laughs) a fraught genre. (laughs) You know, they're a good time, I think. I like watching them. I like listening to them. Um, But, you know, they're not, they're not something the public can widely accept or be into. But is it punk, Haley? (laughs) Is is it, will they still have cred? Is the Black Parade punk? (laughs) No. Are we going to view down Partly, that but... path? Because I would venture to say no. <laughs> it's it's a mix. It's a blend. Okay, it's a I blend. No, it's more glam than. It's a it's an ethos. All right, it's the attitude. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you know, if if the attitude is all you need, then you can take that into the Broadway setting, and that can be punk. I just imagining the shitstorm that would happen. Yeah. Imagine imagine the crowd at that theater. Oh boy. Full of kids in striped arm warmers. Oh no. The crowd actually wouldn't be that different of like theater nerds versus people that like My Chemical Romance. It's not yeah, that a, different of a pool. Yeah, there's a huge overlap there. It's uh <laughs> that Venn diagram is almost a circle. <laughs> oh man. But yes, do we have anything else to mention? I don't. I'm gonna go ahead and say if this gets made in the next four years, Timothy Chalamet should be no. the lead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. He just has a great look for, like, a young guy, you know, who becomes, like, a soldier, you know, he's not built for it, you know? Oh, my God. Oh, boy. <laughs> Can he sing? I don't know. I don't, it doesn't matter. That's I just a, want to cast no, him in all the things. <laughs> it's a really important factor here. He can learn, I'm sure. Mm. I don't know. Oh, That's boy. also why it couldn't be musical, because, like, who are we going to get to sing this? <laughs> yeah. Who are we going to get to, like, sing my chemical, sing the Black Parade that's not Gerard and no. that we'll be happy with? No Absolutely one. Absolutely not, no. Yes. Are those all of our thoughts on Black Parade the musical? Uh, other than I sure as fuck better be cast in it if it ever happens. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Well, if Gerard's people call my people, we'll yeah. see what we can do. Yeah, and then you call my people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have them get in touch. Right. I can pull some strings, okay? Okay, okay. I look forward to that. It is 25% my production. <laughs> All right, are we moving into some anecdotes? Yep, we sure are. We are going to move right along into some anecdotes. Haley, do you have an anecdote? I do. It's from Twitter user Sushi, two S's in the beginning, and what is that, four I's? Sushi says, um, oh, before I start, 
this is a there's a trigger warning for eating disorders and mentions of suicide. So if that bothers you, skip ahead about four minutes. Um, Sushi says, I'm kind of a baby fan, seeing as I was born in early 2002, so that's darn fun. (laughs) I'm three months older than Bullets is, that's my claim to not being a real child. I didn't get into MCR until 2015 because I didn't really get into any kind of music until I was already a teenager. So, when I was younger, I was a gymnast and I was on my national team for five years cumulatively. Despite apparently being good at the sport, I hated it. Everyone I had to work with either ignored me or straight up bullied me. When I was nine, I developed an eating disorder that stemmed from being told I wasn't thin or light enough by other gymnasts. Side note, I was around 67 pounds at this point in time. A combination of this, the bullying, and what I would later find out to be chronic pain led me down some dark thought paths. Ones that made me consider ending my own life at the age of 10. But I felt like I couldn't leave in case I disappointed my parents or wasted my talent. I stayed in that toxic environment for years with my only escape being reading, which I barely had time to do. I didn't leave until I was 14 and I was in so much physical pain I couldn't do it anymore. But having left something that had taken up 11 years of my life, I felt like I no longer had a purpose. Just before I left gymnastics for good, I had joined my school's production of We Will Rock You, (laughs) where I met my now best friend. They introduced me to some music because I literally listened to nothing with any intent at that point, like Black Veil Brides, Falling in Reverse, Panic at the Disco, 21 Pilots, Emma Blackery, and Drumroll MCR. There were also some others, but they didn't click as much with me. Funnily enough, I started listening to MCR on March 22nd, 2015. MCR helped a lot during that period of my life. Even though they were not together at that point, their music spoke to me in a way nothing ever had before. But by the time I reached my second last year at high school, 2017, other things took over again. I had little time to do anything that I fully enjoyed because I was doing some really important exams and music for leisure purposes. Hi, I'm a classical musician too. Got put on the back burner. From mid-2018, however, I got back on the MCR train. I was going through a bit of a hard time with my health, practically breaking down in tears from pain after walking for a while. I'm a naturally stubborn person and I kept telling myself it would go away and that it was nothing. It was not nothing and had been going on for six years, but again, stubborn. I've only had a diagnosis for around two months at the time of sending this message, but it was a combination of going back and listening to MCR from the beginning, specifically The World is Ugly and I'm Not Okay, and the lovely Jessica kelgren Fozard on YouTube that helped me get over my stubborn ways, in one sense, and use them to go fight doctors who wouldn't listen to me. I started listening to your podcast just as I started uni back in September, aka also when I got a diagnosis, as a way to fill time on the train, and just as I do that, they get back together, on schedule, what a power move. So I really feel like these boys have been with me every step of the way. Side note, went to Frank's gig in Glasgow and in August and witnessed him unpack his suitcase on Glasgow Street. <laughs> Didn't want to disturb him and be that person, but I did say hi as he walked past and got a hide back, so I feel quite accomplished. Also, Stan Ray Toro. Wow. I What are the what are the odds? I like just, honestly. What are the we didn't plan this. Like just something, you know, honestly, something this, weird happens with our podcast where like we just make stuff happen. <laughs> this happens every fucking time. It does. Like we just have this like fate thing around this entire <laughs> podcast where somehow we barely try and like still <laughs> shit happens oh my god thank you for your fanny doubt that was amazing <laughs> no one's ever mentioned this musical before this for this episode and just okay <laughs> all right i've got a second fanny doubt from vampire hicks on twitter vampire hicks. there's a couple of r's in there and an x they say hi cat and Haley." To preface, this is pretty long, and I write like a 40-year-old man. My apologies. <laughs> I thought you might appreciate my horoscope from the day MCR returned. I'll read you that horoscope. It says, Make people remember what it feels like to be seen, to belong, to know themselves, to not be alone after a long loneliness. Yes. It's pretty cosmic. <laughs> it's cosmic. It's cosmic. 
However heartbroken I am that my best friend and I didn't get tickets. This is also sent before the tour announcement. However heartbroken I am that my best friend and I didn't get tickets, I'm so excited to even have had the chance to see my, to see my favorite band live. It's something I never even thought of as a possibility, considering that I was born the year Bullets was released and didn't hear of MCR until middle school, by which time they had broken up. Nevertheless, their music helped me connect to some of my closest friends in high school. It got me through some tough times, too. Most people know them for the Black Parade, it was my introduction too, but it's actually the album I know the least. I couldn't stand to listen to it for a while after my mom was diagnosed with cancer while I was in high school. There was a lot that I was afraid to process. MCR gave me a space to feel things so deeply that it scared me, and I felt the best thing for me at that point was to just keep moving. But one day driving home, Welcome to the Black Parade came on shuffle. I heard the first note and I just cried. After that I let myself listen to them again, though mostly revenge and danger days. After listening to your episodes on the Black Parade, I finally listened to the album and B-sides all the way through. It was amazing to hear some of my formerly painful old favorites in a new way. I couldn't afford full albums when I started listening in middle school, so I had a couple songs from Revenge, Helena, Not Okay, Ghost, and Venom, then Mama, Sleep, and Famous Last Words. Danger Days was somehow the first full album I listened to, and I played it on repeat for months. Then in high school, my best friend showed me the rest, the rest of Revenge and Bullets as well as Life on the Murder Scene. At one point, we almost put a Danger Days cosplay group together. Speaking of California to 2019, I recently moved to LA for college. Gerard apparently lives in a neighborhood close to my school, and I think about it sometimes. It makes me happy to think he's somewhere out there living his best life. I love being here, but it's definitely been an adjustment. I still watch Life on the Murder Scene and the Not a Recording video with my best friend, who now lives across the country from me. Listening to your podcast made me feel a little less alone and like it's okay to still feel as much as I do about this music. On October 26th, a large wildfire in my home county had just started. I didn't know if my family was going to have to evacuate or if my house would be safe, and I was stuck watching from afar. A friend somehow found an MCR cover band in a tiny, definitely illegal, DIY venue. (laughs) It was an all-female revenge-era group, badass, who I'm sure were pretty drunk, but looked like they were having fun. They forgot half the lyrics, but the crowd filled in. I screamed my lungs out and somehow was able to forget everything but the music. Being in that moment of art and community and rebellion and love reminded me of the world outside of myself again. And five days later, MCR came back from the dead. Looking at the state of things now, I think the world really does need them again. At least I know I do. It's such a good fan anecdote. Yeah. Thank you for sending it in. We love that. We love mm-hmm. that story. Now is the time. Haley. Oh. What is your song of the quarantine so far? You know, because of this um, uh, pandemic, I have gotten into Billie Eilish for some reason because I started watching a shit ton (laughs) of YouTube videos. Yeah. And I just so happened to watch like some of her interviews and then I watched this like British priest react to her music videos. What do the British priests think? (laughs) He's really cool, and he thinks that she, she has some very creative and um, interesting ideas that send out an actually good message. Um, That's very nice of the British priest. Does the British priest often review videos? Is that his job, or does he just do it for Billie Eilish? No, well, he, he's done a few of them. So he's on, um, uh, do you know the, the YouTube channel Korean Englishman? I do not. They're apparently like a really big YouTube channel and they're Englishmen who love Korea and they they have traveled to Korea a couple times and they do a bunch of stuff with that culture and all that. And then they just so happen to have a British priest friend who they bring on the channel to like react to stuff and talk about Mm -hmm. religion and talk about just like fun stuff too, just, you know, normal person stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I really like him. I've gotten into him a lot. But so he reviewed a Billie Eilish video and I was like, I actually really like this song. And I haven't really heard any Billie Eilish stuff other than Bad Guy because I'm an old and I don't listen to new music. <laughs> but I started listening to her stuff. So I really like everything I wanted. I had a dream I got everything I wanted Not what you think And if I'm 
being honest, it might have been a nightmare to anyone who might care. I've had it stuck in my head for like three days. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's where we're at. I I want to like Billie Eilish. You should like, like I'd Billie like Eilish. Bad Guy. Here's my here's my thing. I like the I like the music. I like the way it's constructed. But I just hearing the whisper singing makes my I think it makes my body imagine if I was doing it and how uncomfortable I would be. <laughs> and so like I can't listen to it. I just I can't. It makes it makes me like physically uncomfortable. Wow. Um and I can't listen to like more than a more than a few moments of it and I just can't really enjoy it. So Huh. That's yeah. sad for me because, like, I want to be on this team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I get can't. That. I understand that. It's a style, you know. It's a choice for sure. Yeah, but it really sets me on edge. And it's I not her it. fault. It's just me. It's just, you know, and she can belt. She can sing loud and she can, you know, do all kinds of stuff, whatever. But that's just her her stylistic choices. She wants to be very chill and, like, make you listen harder. And she's very good at it's very hard to sing that way, which is why it makes me so uncomfortable to listen to is because like I'm imagining <laughs> how out of air I would be and how <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy that. Yeah. Um, but she does it really well and it's really hard to do that. So like good on you, but I can't I can't do it. And I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I respect I respect the hustle. Yeah. Um, My song of the week, I've been like kind of in like, I don't know. A strange music place i think i just need to be soothed you know yeah. as i often do and so i've just been listening to like some standbys you know and haven't really had a lot of room in my brain for new music mm-hmm. because i'm stressed um i get that but there is a song and it's by swimmers um but also has fiddler on it and it's called people This song, I do enjoy the song, but when I first, whenever it first comes on, it throws me for a loop because it starts with uh, the iPhone alarm sound <laughs> in the background. And so I always think I have a timer going off or something. That's funny. Um, I am into it. Mm-hmm. And I hope that guy from Swimmers is is good now. Like they got, like a couple of them got into like an accident when they were going on tour or something. Oh, no. and, like, yeah, one of them was in the hospital for a while, but. Jeez. Hopefully he's better now. Yeah. All right. Is it time for our last order of business where I do the thing? Mm-hmm. Do the thing, Julie. <sighs> Judy. Julie. I'm doing the thing. If you don't know, we have a Patreon. You can find it at patreon.com slash chemicalfancast. And if you pledge $2 or more a month, you will not only be supporting your favorite podcast, but you'll also get your name on this incredibly long list and I will read your name every episode, and I will get it wrong. Uh, but it will be fun for some people. So this is a big thank you to Tim Malpass, Vienna Langton, Gabby Dauber, The Boy Phantom, my mom, Tara Lamantia, Cherith McGregor, Katie Kelly, Melissa Contreras, Phil Grant, Emmer Johnson, Caitlin Carnes, Anne Louise Mullen, Dominique Ray, Liz Roswell, Bertha Villa, Jen Schillingberg, Vanessa Zermeno, Brianna Tong, Cassie Witt, Patricia Ignacio, Darcy Sheltman, Ella Bird, Jasmine Brett, Rihanna DeGraff, Haley's sister, Casey Gerhart, Jacob Grimm, Alex Hasman, Iris Splendence, Jessica Labrizzi, Montana Miller, Sarah Joe, The Millennial Freelancer, Bonnie, Katie Tingy, Kale Haley, Fifi Marr, Megan, Emily Ronquillo, Brooke Tara, Keenia Noriega, Slimiri Bigertz, Charlie Needles, Kathleen Harlow, Kristen Knight, Lisa Ridnor, Christine Gears, Vic, Kirsten McNally, Joanna Bentine, Robin, Alina Guir, Kathleen D, Clarissa Thomas, Olivia Elliott, Jess Acton, Ray, Sam Newkrich, Jessica Taylor, Phantoms Forever, Tara Smith, Gigi, Jennifer Tashina, Allison Morris, Lucy Tima, Becky Hyde, Olivia Hamilton, Karen Islas, F.T. Wills, Layla Maddy, Sally from Melbourne, Evan Gorey, Sylvia, Michaela Zikmandova, Sage Ferris, Nicholas Reed, Emma Wilson, Kelly Vincent, Stephanie Diaz, Fjolnir Thorne, Anderson, Christina Sinkovec, and Lena Mueller. 
Thank you all so much for supporting us. Wow. Ah! <laughs> I fell asleep. How long has it been? Five years? <laughs> Is the it's pandemic about... over? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there's just a different pandemic. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting us, especially all of you Nordic people. <laughs> Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? Why are there so many of you? <laughs> like, God bless, but also stop it. <laughs> I think they're banding together and doing it on purpose. I think they are. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Haley, if people want to talk to us uh, during the quarantine or whenever... Where can they get in touch if they need some human contact? This is the best time to reach us. We're not fucking doing anything. I'm literally at my house all the time. (laughs) They can reach us at Twitter and Instagram at Chemical Fancast, Facebook My Chemical Fancast, and email us some words and things at MyChemicalFancast at gmail.com. Yes. Guys, that's all we've got for today. Be safe, stay at home, wash your hands, make some art, okay? Use this time to refresh and recharge and do all the things you feel like you don't have time for. Read some books. Yeah. Watch some good Netflix shows. I sewed up my jeans that I've been meaning to sew up. I did that. Oh, hell yeah. A great time to, like, mend your clothes, you know, like, clean your room. Rearrange your furniture. Yeah. Play with your pets. Adopt a puppy. I know someone who adopted a puppy because they were like, it's a great month to just like bond with a puppy. <laughs> so yeah, live your best life. Mm-hmm. Be safe out there. Don't panic. It's fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. Until next time. I'm Kat. I'm Haley. And this is My Chemical Fancast. Bye. Bye.